So the idea was to video myself getting out of London. At the moment, I'm simply struggling to get out of the industrial estate in London, Wembley actually. And uh, this truck parked on the double yellows is stopping me. I have to be careful not to clash mirrors. You have to reverse all the way up there. Pull my mirror in. So now I need to turn right and basically here we're relying on the good graces of somebody who's going to let me out or a pedestrian crossing it with traffic lights. It doesn't look like it's happening in the near future. a little bit. See. He let me out, but he didn't leave me enough space to turn. So I couldn't actually come out, which is why I gestured to that minicab driver, Uber driver, whoever it may be. Because it's London, you've got to push. Lorry holds your gear, low gears. Um, which I prefer it didn't do, but it's an automatic. And to change gear, I've got to reach down there. And I can't really do that on a practical basis. I'm loaded, but pretty lightly loaded. Second hand pickup trucks, which are going to Mongolia. Apparently. What you see driving a lorry in London is a lot of looking around. My neck gets a good ex bit of exercise. Try to keep the car door lengths apart from parked vehicles, especially delivery vehicles like a van. The driver might decide to jump out. Get it pretty close to parked cars at the back, and pretty close to curbs in the centre. Always looking as far as I can up the road. See, this Range Rover is going to come out to his right to go through the gap. Just constantly keep weaving left to right because the traffic islands and the parked cars, like I say, is not too bad. Now, obviously, <laughs> the way they designed this road, it's impossible, even driving a car, to actually not drive on the cross-hatching, so we can drive on the cross-hatching. But in a lorry, you have to do that a lot. Nice sunny day. Got a scooter behind. So I'm gonna look out for the scooter looking to make progress. Ambulance in front. And ambulance is going to go past that car and he's going to be on the other side, so it's not going to conflict. So the route is to get myself out of suburbia, suburban London, um, and get myself to the A40. A40, M25. See, I'm looking at the, the black car in the distance, and basically I'm gonna commit myself to being in the middle of the road. If anything, taking up more space than I need to, another Uber, mini cab of some sort. Um, it, otherwise, the car driver's attempted to push through a very small gap, um, which, 
users up both our margins for error. They got two lanes feeding feeding right, but I'll straddle the lanes more towards the left uh, because I'm going to use both of these lanes. The, the unit will go, if it was just the unit, it would just go around in the left lane, but the trailer's gonna go across both. And if that's gonna happen, it's best to use all of the space. If you don't, be careful not to hit the mirrors on the lights as well. Um, if you don't do that, car drivers come screaming up your outside and then this driver, they're getting squished. And you have to stop. Um, let them through, so it's a bit of a risk. The scooter's gone, the scooter behind me has gone the other way now. I was looking ahead, I can see the service, oh, it's an ambulance. It's an ambulance. Parked. Parked up. So again, I'm moving off. The indicate, ambulance driver. So we're coming up for the turn onto Sudbury Court Drive and go out to the right to go left because I know it's fairly tight. Going. People don't indicate. Lovely, of course. So there's two lanes, but again, I'm using both because otherwise I ride the trailer up the curb. And as it happens, the trailer gets within a couple of inches of the curb anyway. This chap with the Mercedes pulled out in front of the you know, he's going to squeeze past, whatever the case. He actually pulled out in front of the guy. So the van driver stuck his nose into the road. Um, by a few inches. I mean, yeah, sure, I could have swan straight along, missed it by inches. But if you're missing something by inches, his foot slips off the clutch. Bosh, you've got an accident for no reason, so it's best to give a bit of clearance. But People don't, some people don't think about the front of their vehicle, they pull up, so they're in the right position. For most cars, it doesn't make a lot of difference. For trucks, you need that space. It's a fortune limit here, yeah. putting the left hand wheels on the cyclist space simply so I don't make it too uncomfortable for myself. Obviously, if a scooter or something come sliding up my left hand side, I would give them space or a bicycle. Although if a cyclist is doing 20 miles an hour up Sudbury Court Drive, they're doing pretty well. Right, again, I actually got lots of space in these lanes and I won't straddle it because they really are wide. Um, in the trees, uh, but it looks like it's going to be wide going through. Loot of van driver behind me is actually going to give me the space. <laughs> if it comes very narrow, you see where other lorries have knocked into those barriers. If you get a bit of traffic that's turning right there, you can find yourself stopped in the middle of the road. Van stopping, watching for the oh yeah, there we go, door open. Becomes predictable. Oh, that's the same chap who uh, stuck his nose out. I don't know why I'm waving at him to say thank you. That's a drive. The Amazon, isn't it? The Amazon driver. Drive a band like that in suburbia. Stopping and starting and weaving around and rushing around. Looking at the scooter in front. Looking for the pedestrians in the cars. Not pedestrians. You know what I mean. They will be pedestrians if they get out. And that, that's when it becomes a problem. Um, looking ahead, I can see the white van that's parked on the left is going to force me into the middle of the road. So you've got to be careful people coming the other way. 
uh, stay out to the left a little bit. So it just puts me on the right line, coming out of this little high street bit. There's a chap standing by his car door. Looking in the distance, there's a bus coming the other way, and the bus is going into the bus stop, so the white van's stopping. So the bus being in the bus stop with the back end of the bus sticking out pushes the other vehicles, Mercedes flashing lights. And all the time I'm looking in my six mirrors. Um, now we've got the flatbed recovery truck. I oh, was reversing down there, okay. Or is he attempting to turn around in the road? Flatbed man, are you staying there? might have been attempting a free point turn. So I'm very careful of pulling away from stationary um, to check a quite small mirror that faces the blind spot on the left hand side and I'm looking for pedestrians and cyclists and dogs and cats and I don't know anything anything that might get squished because I can't see it. So you've got the double decker truck parked facing against the traffic and he's pushing people out. You know, trying to look for, you know, in the the, the drivers and passenger seats of the, these cars I'm overtaking and to see if anybody's going to jump out without looking like the van driver did. Stop with an enough distance to go around. What blue loop van is still behind me. Um, do, 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 do. Still lots of building going on in London. You see the cranes in the distance. You see a plane in the distance. That's where we're, we're heading that way. A plane landing at Heathrow. So again, I'm going to pull off. So I'm going to be careful checking my blind spot mirrors and my blind spot. DPD driver wants to get out and I'm going to let him. The post office is going to let him. The old delivery boys stick together. DPD man goes straight down the bus lane. <laughs> Doesn't care. So he's two lanes going straight ahead because there's parked cars in the distance. I'm just going to stay on the right hand side. You can see all of the time I'm looking in the mirrors, checking a blind spot mirror. So I look that way for the mirror that faces the front, that way for the mirror that faces a blind spot, and that way obviously for the the convex mirror for the blind spot down the side, uh, down the rear side. They're both down the side, obviously, but the, you know what. Um, You've got another blind spot mirror here, but you can still look down there to see if anything's right next to you. Um, now I see the traffic stopping, so I'm checking, and it's not my turn yet. So all the time I'm checking to see if a cyclist or a motorcyclist or even a car in this situation comes down my left hand side. So I keep looking keep having good situational awareness gave my, gave my mirrors a thorough clean whilst I was at the collection and now lights change spend almost as much time looking in the mirrors as you do forwards pedestrian kind of clear from the pedestrian crossing Again, I'm staying nice and to the right, just in case someone's going to come out of one of these cars. As much as I can. Use a cross hatching. The highway code says you know, use it if necessary, if there's not a solid line. So I'm looking for the, I'm staying reasonably well to the right. It's one of those scooters, design. someone's on one of those scooters, someone's standing behind that. We've got those vans back there. Going past. 
traffic warden on a scooter. It'd be funny to say I aim for them, but of course I don't. Again. See the van manoeuvring either to park or to pull out. That Audi is quite close to the white one, so I'm nice and gently past him. Again, if I can, I'm going to stay car door lengths away from these parked cars as much as I can. Not too bad traffic today. And again, there's two lanes to go straight on, but I can see parked cars in the distance. So I'm going to stay in lane two. What's sounding like a copper? Please talk like this. I'm proceeding in the southerly direction. It goes in lane two and three. There's no use romping on the gas. I'm lightly loaded. I can accelerate a lot harder than this. But why? Why? I can see ahead. I can see I'm just going to get stuck in traffic. So I can stay out. So I can't necessarily see what's behind that white van. And there was somebody sitting in that uh, service van. See, there's a skip truck on the left, parked up. I'm looking underneath the skip truck to see the shadow of people. Someone standing there, so the Toyota or whatever it is, the car parked there. It's got the lights on, so there is someone in it. So get give myself extra margin safety. Passenger door open, not a problem. I'm not quite sure here. You do have two lanes going forward, and I think I can. Well, I should do. Obviously, you should always drive on the left. But this does narrow into two lanes. I don't know if you can hear, but the got the exhaust brake on automatic, which means when I apply the foot brake, it also applies the exhaust brake, and that's the difference in the engine load. Now this is do not overtake cyclists. Now I'm watching for the pedestrians. That chap there with the blue baseball cap was standing well back, because at that point I'm just a couple of inches from the curb. So imagine the pedestrian standing there right up against the curb. Nothing else. I wouldn't get clipped by the mirror, not with this size truck, but um, a slight stumble, moment in attention, and the pedestrian gets hit by or falls over and hits the trailer. The jogger coming up on the left hand side. Drivers coming in from. I'm going to let this uh, chap go. Because I can't go forward anyway. There's no point going forward and blocking a car when I'm just going to have to stop at the pedestrian crossing. Another plane in the distance. Beautiful day. I see a silver car between the buses. So I'm gonna stop there. Car can come out, go on. That's the kind of car you avoid. Rusty, dent, dirty, dented, apparently poorly maintained old Toyota. Everything about that car says, I just don't care less about my driving. Now we got three lanes. I'm gonna join the A40 now. So yeah, I straddle depends on the circumstances, but most of the time I'll straddle the two turn right lanes, at least until I get to about here. For the three reasons state of point. Like a seven and a half tonner behind me driving like a lunatic.
with his headphones on, chilling out to his tunes. See, that's the reason you straddle those. Now, if I cut in now, my trailer rides up the curb, which is bad. It's bad driving. Um, and basically, I need that chap to move in front of his lorry out of the way. So again, see, he knows the roads better than I do. Kind of in the wrong lane there. Yeah, I made a mistake, I got in the wrong lane. Then that makes it more difficult because I had to see what's going around the left. There's a car like, behind the trailer. And on to the A40.